person alive has seen what happened or seen happen what might be happening right now in American politics. They might be wrong about that. There might be some 167-year-old out there who's lying about his age who has a clear memory of this country's Whig party disintegrating between 1852 and 1856 and who could tell us tonight, yeah, what the Republicans are doing right now, that's how it started for those poor Whigs. It's our number one story, tonight's WTF moment. This story takes us to Marathon County, Wisconsin, and a man named Kevin Stevenson. A little more than two months ago, the local newspaper, the Wausau Daily Herald, printed his regular guest column in which he criticized Boss Limbaugh. Sadly, he wrote, today's politics is full of self-interest. Rush Limbaugh is not a politician. He does believe in conservatism and has a forum to express his views. You must admit that he has a large and loyal following. But so does Rachel Maddow as an extreme liberal. Both of these people need to shock to keep their ratings high. They are entertainers who earn their living by what they say, not what they accomplish. Republicans do not agree with all the president's policies, but no one wants him to fail as president. That's because when leaders fail, so do their followers. No good citizen wants the United States to fail. Some may think that he will fail, but this is far different from wanting him to fail. Last week, because of that article, Mr. Stevenson lost his job. Now, this isn't some instance of external revenge by Limbaugh or Rachel, some back-channel retribution from Limbaugh's corporate master's clear-channel communications. This isn't a freedom of the press issue, and you can put down your calendar. You do not have to meet me at the barricades. This has nothing to do with violations of Mr. Stevenson's First Amendment rights to free speech. And that is all true because the job from which Mr. Stevenson was fired was that of spokesman for the Marathon County Wisconsin Republican Party. And last Thursday, when that county party met, it, to quote Mr. Stevenson, got hostile and it got personal. They felt I was too moderate in what I was speaking and printing. The Marathon County Republicans, for reasons known only to themselves, dismissed their spokesman on a technicality about where he lived. And then the former county president and still local Republican treasurer blew the lid off that excuse. If the leadership had wanted a more moderate position, we would have let him continue, said Kevin Hermaning to the local paper. This is just part of what you're seeing nationwide, the fired Mr. Stevenson concluded. Party members know that I don't agree with Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh is hurting us more than helping us. The more you hear from Mr. Stevenson, the more apparent it becomes that he is exactly the kind of guy whom 20 years ago the Republicans would have embraced. Upon his firing, he issued a statement. The most imminent danger facing the Republican Party comes from within. A growing party embraces its differences and uses the strength of its differences in a positive manner. Differences should not be feared but embraced, as we as Americans are a mixture of diverse cultures with a rich history. The Republican Party is at a crossroads. Purging people who have differences from its ranks will ensure that it remains a minority party well into the future. The direction the Republican Party chooses, not the Democratic Party, will determine its fate. Purging. An ugly word, but the correct one. If you don't agree with the extremism of Limbaugh, you're out. Ask Arlen Specter, Michael Steele, Congressman Gingrey, John McCain, Roberta McCain, Megan McCain. And if you point out that it is extremism, one of the guys escorting you out the door will shout, Extremism in defense of liberty is no vice. The odds are pretty good that the screamer will know that it is Barry Goldwater he is quoting. The odds are also pretty good that the screamer will never have made that great intellectual leap to the realization that 110 days after Barry Goldwater uttered that immortal manifesto, he lost the election by 16 million votes and 434 of them in the Electoral College. The problem is, then and now, if you keep showing people the door, Sooner or later, there will be more people outside the door than inside it with you. And this brings us back to the hypothetical 167-year-old viewer who's saying, I warned Daniel Webster about this in 1852, and he didn't listen to me either. The Whig Party was half of the American two-party system. It rose to prominence by being the party of no in fierce opposition to the then-dominant Democrats. The Whigs managed to elect William Henry Harrison president and then Zachary Taylor. The party included them and Daniel Webster and the famous Senator Henry Clay and former and future presidents like John Quincy Adams, John Tyler and Millard Fillmore. And as the 1850s began, the Whigs had an incredible advantage as well. The Democrats were descending into a pro-slavery position, whereupon the pro-slavery faction in the Whig party started to expel the anti-slavery Whigs. Then they put the squeeze on the Whigs who were merely neutral or moderate about slavery. It was a purge, a cleansing of those who were not conservative enough to be Whigs. So the local Whig party leader in Illinois quit the party. In fact, he quit politics. He went back to being a lawyer. 
His name was Abraham Lincoln. But the Whigs kept their party pure. Extremism in the defense of what they believed was liberty was no vice, and by 1860, the Whigs had no candidates. They didn't even hold a convention. Kevin Stevenson is not Abraham Lincoln, and ultra-conservative rage of today is not the issue of slavery, and the Republicans are not the Whigs. Not yet, anyway. But no organization, political or otherwise, collapses only from the top. Just as you have to screw it up nationally, so too do you have to unravel it down at the grassroots. And as the firing of Mr. Stevenson by the Marathon County GOP suggests, the one area in which Republicans are firing on all cylinders is firing moderate Republicans. That's countdown for this, the 2,224th day since the previous president declared mission accomplished in Iraq. I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck.